All right, I see we've entered into another preset trio of videos. Zane, go start working on the Flareon script. Although given the last time we had a trio, you guys cared so little about Meganium, it was delayed a week. Ah, who cares? You guys will vote for Flareon eventually, right? This week though, we've got Vaporeon. Vaporeon was the elegant evolution before Espeon was even a twinkle in Sugimori's eye. Just like Jolteon, Vaporeon has shown up a bunch of times in pretty much every form of Pokemon media, for the simple reason that you nerds love evolution. I mean, I do too. Who doesn't? Vaporeon itself is really cool. It's almost like a literal interpretation of a sea lion, with its fin as an aquatic mane. One tidbit that I've always wished was more explored with Vaporeon is its supposed capability to be able to melt away entirely into water, which honestly is the coolest thing I've ever heard. I guess acid armor is supposed to be a representative of that, and in season 1, Rainer's Vaporeon did use acid armor, and that's exactly what it did. But acid armor isn't an exclusive move to Vaporeon, so I don't know. Anyway, let's get into it. How good was Vaporeon actually? And in this video, we'll be covering these competitive formats. Jolteon may have been the quintessential electric type, and Vaporeon was sort of the quintessential water type, but just wait until you see Flareon. Instead of base 130 speed, Vaporeon grabbed 130 HP, pointing it more towards the tanking side of things. Unfortunately for Vaporeon, being the beacon of water types wasn't quite as great as Jolteon's gig. In addition to being completely walled by Chansey, Vaporeon found itself stimmied by another, more specialized water type, Starmie. Starmie's dual typing along with an absolute incredible moveset featuring Thunder Wave, Recover, and Thunderbolt made it a far superior choice. And since Starmie was so popular, Vaporeon found itself frequently unable to make a dent against teams. It of course did well against rock and ground types with Blizzard and Surf, but Vaporeon didn't really have anything to set it apart from other water types. Lapras had the same bulk but a way better move pool. Vaporeon was forced to finish out with Body Slam, Rest, or Mimic, while Lapras boasted Thunderbolt and Confuse Ray in addition to its Stab Blizzard. Gyarados likewise had Thunder and the ability to attack from both sides of the spectrum. Even Tentacruel had Rap and Swords Dance. And Vaporeon had Acid Armor, Haze. Yeah, not the greatest differentiating qualities. Gen 1 simply wasn't a place for a tanky water type who didn't have some sort of attacking power. As such, Vaporeon failed hard against the many special beasts and likewise didn't enjoy going up against Jolteon or Zapdos, whose huge special meant a non-stab Blizzard wasn't even a huge concern. Even grass types who feared Blizzard like Venusaur and Victory Bell could easily cut through Vaporeon's huge HP with a critical hit Razor Leaf. In Gen 1, Vaporeon found itself in underuse, and in Nintendo Cup, it found itself in G tier. Yikes. If Vaporeon was outclassed by other water types in Gen 1, in Gen 2, it was put in a totally different school. Suiku was the new prototypical water type, pushing Vaporeon down into irrelevancy in much the same way Raikou almost did to Jolteon. Vaporeon's only defining attributes were Reflect, Haze, and Baton Pass, but Suiku's 115 defense meant it was a far superior tank. For most of GSC, Vaporeon sat in borderline. It was budget Suicune with somewhat better support moves. This set ran Surf, Rest, Haze, and Reflect. Too good for underuse, but simply not good enough to be used in place of the Legendary. Then in 2001, the New York City Pokemon Center started giving away a Pokemon every week. These Pokemon were crazy unique. A lot of them were shiny Legendaries or Starters, and they also featured strange moves like Zap Cannon Squirtle and Spike's Delibird. Among those strange giveaways was an Eevee, which was one of the Pokemon you could get from February 21st to February 27th in 2003, and just two weeks before the Pokemon Center stopped doing these giveaways altogether, that Eevee had growth. In Gen 2, growth simply raises special attack by one stage, a paltry boost that normally would be insignificant. However, growth was the only special attack boosting move in the game at the time, other than Ancient Power, since Amnesia now only affected special defense. For most Pokemon that learned growth naturally, it was still useless, with the one exception being Victory Bell, who probably was still better off running Swords Dance anyway. The two Pokemon that could make growth work were Espeon, who packed Morning Sun in a 130 special attack, and Vaporeon. For those of you who played in Gen 3 and later, the concept to Vaporeon's growth set will look incredibly similar. It's basically Crocoon. With Rest Talk, Growth, and one attacking move, Vaporeon was a supremely annoying sweeping threat that was hard to take down and still did great damage. While physical attackers could exploit its low defense, and electric types could wear through it with enough persistence, proper prediction meant Vaporeon could also get the jump on those would-be counters. And if it ran Acid Armor or Roar instead of Sleep Talk, it could even beat them, or at least scare them away. This was a unique sweeper set, one that succeeded more due to 
bulk and longevity over raw power. As mentioned, big damage was the best way to beat it, specifically Zapdos and Raikou, but predicting those switches could make things disastrous for the player controlling the electric type. Snorlax could win some matchups, but Acid Armor beat it straight up. Most of Vaporeon's checks were highly vulnerable to smart play due to its solid damage. Baiting out an Executor and then switching in a Pursuit user would mean Vaporeon had done its job already. However, there were some Pokemon that could just wall Vaporeon. Roar Suicune would win as long as Vaporeon didn't carry Roar itself, and while Blissey would lose the PP stall war because growth has so many uses, its light screen could make things easier for teammates switching into Vaporeon. Finally, Starmie could run a battle with Thunder or Light Screen, and would actually win in the PP war because of Rapid Spin's high PP. With growth, Vaporeon was a legitimate sweeping threat, and yes, that means overuse. However, it didn't have this in Nintendo Cup, of course, because this event EV came out after Nintendo Cup 2001. And of course, Gen 3 gave Suicune Calm Mind, with Crow Cool fully in effect and equipped with pressure to win PP wars, Growth Vaporeon was very dead, though it would have been anyways as Gen 3 pretty much saw the death of single stage altering stat moves. But things were not all bad for Vaporeon. In fact, things got pretty damn good. Vaporeon must have seen a shooting star in between generations because its wish paid off. It did have a differentiating move, and that move was... Well, Wish, of course. With Wish and Protect, Vaporeon was a remarkably effective tank when combined with Toxic or Ice Beam. And remember how I said Vaporeon was the quintessential water type? This is where that truly started, when bulky waters were incredibly effective due to their typing and common ability to counter meta-defining threats like Salamence and Metagross. Vaporeon could also opt into being a phaser, flipping the script on Suicune. While Suicune's roar had stopped growth Vaporeon in the past, now it was Vaporeon stopping Crocoon with Haze. Haze was taking over roar as mechanics had changed between gens. In Gen 2, the slower Pokemon's Roar would work, which is why Roar variants of Vaporeon actually beat Suicune. But in this generation, it was the faster Roar that took effect, meaning Suicune would win out. But since Roar always goes last, Haze became the go-to phasing move. What's more, Water Absorb meant Suicune couldn't even touch Vaporeon. This set rounded out with a choice of Protect, Ice Beam, or Toxic, depending on if you wanted to play more consistent or beat specific threats like Salamence or Cloyster. But Vaporeon is an evolution, and you know what that means. Baton Pass. The Eeveelutions were part of a select group of Pokemon that got both Wish and Baton Pass that only included them, Absol, Illumise, Zatu, Spinda, and Plus One Minin. None of those Pokemon had the stats to use Baton Pass and Wish. And to be honest, the only Eeveelutions that did were Umbreon and Vaporeon, whose low speed and high defenses made them the ideal Wish Passers. And if you wanted a fully defensive Wish Passer who was more there to stall, Umbreon was the ideal choice. But Vaporeon was able to use its special attack stat to threaten opponents before passing off its substitute and or wish. Vaporeon was a crucial part of full baton pass chain that aimed to pass as many boosts as possible to a single recipient. Being a bulky Pokemon with wish and substitute wasn't enough. Umbreon fit that bill just as well while also passing mean look. Vaporeon's true selling points came from its typing, an incredible move in acid armor. As the only user of acid armor and baton pass, Vaporeon was essential for safeguarding against physical attacks. And water is an amazing defensive typing with only two weaknesses. Although other defense boosters did exist, like Scizor, Gorbis, or Huntail with Iron Defense, Vaporeon was unquestionably the premier. It was also useful against fire types, as Baton Pass chains could be notoriously weak to them due to common reliance on Ninja, Scizor, and Celebi. Vaporeon allayed both those weaknesses and could additionally re-up substitutes and provide emergency healing if needed, making it the resident medic of the Baton Pass squad. Vaporeon's biggest counter still came in the form of opposing water types, who exploited the fact that it frequently only had Surf to attack with. Gyarados, Quagsar, and Tentacruel all used Vaporeon as setup fodder, as did Snorlax and Celebi. If spikes were down, Suicune's roar could prove an okay tactic, but otherwise it lost hardcore. On the other side, Vaporeon's typing left it only really vulnerable to strong Electro-types, as grass types would fear Ice Beam and weren't that strong in general outside of Celebi, and Raikou, Jolteon, and Zapdos returned as premier checks. Special mentions has to go to Porygon 2 and Gardevoir, who traced Water Absorb and had the stats to tank Ice Beam. But if Vaporeon was running Baton pass, any switch in could potentially prove fatal. Vaporeon was an unholy cross between Umbreon and Suicune, and it's maybe because it was a mix of those two Pokemon that it ended up in Borderline, though it spent time in overuse as well. It was certainly its own beast, but if you wanted a water type tank, you would use Suicune. And if you wanted a Wish Passer, then Umbreon might do the better job. But Vaporeon was still an incredibly solid Pokemon, with very defined niches as a Suicune counter and an Acid Armor Passer. Baton Pass fell to the wayside somewhat in Gen 4, in part due to Vaporeon itself, but with common phasers like Vaporeon running amok, an influx of power in the top part of Overuse,
Zeus, and of course, Stealth Rocks, but Baton Pass was significantly weaker. However, Vaporeon did still play a significant role in full Baton Pass teams, as a bulky attacker that additionally could pass Wish and deal with the menace that was Heatran. But Vaporeon rose in usage on its own merit. Gen 4's meta in large part revolved around heavy hitters mitigated by residual damage from Stealth Rock and Sandstorm, which was present in almost every game due to Tyranitar and Hippowdon's prominence. Keeping your sweeper at full health was invaluable, as that residual damage was essential for many one-hit KOs and two-hit KOs that Pokemon relied on in certain matchups. As such, Vaporeon's ability to pass while also dealing with those threats, which was the same niche it already had, was even more valuable. Its moveset stayed pretty much exactly the same. As Vaporeon was such a common support Pokemon, it also had the opportunity to surprise opponents with the spec set, which, coming off of an impressive 110 special attack, was still quite threatening. Hydro Pump Vaporeon could score one-hit KOs on Skarmory and Jirachi after rocks. There's that residual damage coming into play. Vaporeon's offensive move pool was limited, but just good enough to be a threat, as a water-type move with Ice Beam and Hidden Power Electric is a tried-and-true combination. Signal Beam allowed Vaporeon to destroy Celebi, if it really needed the one-hit KO, but most specs Vaporeon still actually ran Wish, since you're switching out the turn after using it most of the time anyways so it still made sense. As Vaporeon didn't change much, its counters stayed the same as well. All the previous common foes were there, as well as new additions, including Shaman, Roserade, and Empoleon. Nonetheless, Vaporeon saw a big boost in play in Gen 4, where balanced teams were the new mainstays after Gen 3's more defensive gameplay, and it landed itself in overuse. But no gen was kinder to Vaporeon than Generation 5, which changed so that the amount passed would be 50% of the user's HP. And with Vaporeon's huge HP stat, that meant it could potentially pass wishes that would heal attackers for almost their whole HP. Scald was a gift from the gods to all bulky water types, but Vaporeon especially appreciated the ability to cripple those who were trying to strike at its weaker defense. And while Vaporeon's walling abilities were somewhat hindered by the introduction of monstrous new attackers like Thunderous and Virizion, it got a new fun toy in Hydration, which allowed it to shrug off status in the eternal reign of Politoed. Vaporeon's primary set, however, was still its standard Wish support, which again, is almost exactly the same. Wish protect, water move, and then your choice for the last move between Roar, Ice Beam, Toxic, Hidden Power, Electric, you get it. It was purely because of Scald and the new Wish mechanics that Vaporeon became even better at its job. Had Gen 5 not introduced new Vaporeon counters, its hydration sets might have been absurdly powerful. The ability to absorb status and immediately shrug it off with hydration was ridiculous, especially factoring rest in. The badly poisoned status had previously been one of Vaporeon's biggest problems, but it completely beat that now. Vaporeon now had the ability to completely recover its HP in one turn because of rest and not be put to sleep because of hydration. And that's really all it needed from this set. Everything else from moves to EVs was up to the player. So it was just a mix and match of Ice Beam, Wish, Roar, Scald, Surf, basically every move we talked about up until this point. Vaporeon could even go Life Orb if it wanted to, since it had a free HP restore whenever it wanted. But Vaporeon's most notorious uses was in keeping with its lineage. If you've watched our Espeon or Smeargle videos, you already know that we're talking about Baton Pass. Full Baton Pass team started to dominate the Gen 5 ladder towards the end of the game's existence, and Vaporeon was a critical part of them as always. Passing Acid Armor, Wish, and even Aqua Ring, patron saint of Baton Pass Dennis ran this variant. With multiple sets to its name that all fulfilled different roles, Vaporeon was a solid choice for overuse. Sure, it had more counters like Ferrothorn and Virizion, and Pokemon that could boost through it or just punch through it like Conkeldur, but in Gen 5, Vaporeon was living its best life. Vaporeon didn't see too much BGC usage. A lot of its biggest strengths Wish Passioning and Astral Armor in particular are much stronger in singles, and Jellicent achieved a lot of the same goals in doubles. That said, Hydration Rest was still an incredibly strong combination, but in fact most of Vaporeon's success actually used completely different sets. It had one noteworthy national appearance in 2012 thanks to Solomon R, who took Vaporeon to top 16 at the UK Nationals. But we know he used the Tyranitar, so that definitely wasn't Hydration Vaporeon. Vaporeon's best appearance was at the US Nationals in 2013, where Allison McDonald, or Fishy top cutter using a Vaporeon. Her Vaporeon was focused on using spread damage with both Muddy Water and Icy Wind, providing much needed AoE utility. But by Allison's own admission, Vaporeon's role could have maybe been filled by a better Pokemon. It was more because of a personal preference that she used it. Gen 6 introduction of Mega Evolutions meant that Vaporeon's vulnerability to wall breakers was suddenly a glaring flaw. Pokemon like Mega Metacham and Mega Manetric ate it up without having to boost at all, and it couldn't even rely on hydration with Drizzle Nerf. 
the move Wish was simply not in vogue anymore. Keep in mind that Sandstream, one of the main sources of residual damage since Gen 3, had also been nerfed. Even in underused, Vaporeon struggled to differentiate itself from the in vogue Aloma Mola, whose HP stat was even more massive than Vaporeon. But wait, you say, what about Baton Pass? Well, Baton Pass in Gen 6 has a complicated history, and for a detailed explanation of the long story of Baton Pass and Dennis, watch our Espeon video. In short, Vaporeon was a major part of Gen 6 Baton Pass from the outset, fulfilling the same role it always had, which was passing defense boost. As Baton Pass was subsequently nerfed multiple times, Vaporeon remained one of the linchpins of the team, but in a different role as a recipient. The concept behind this is actually similar to the old Gen 2 growth Vaporeon. Vaporeon is hard to kill naturally and can wreck stuff itself, especially when it has plus 6 stored power boost. Vaporeon's natural defenses and typing allowed it to beat almost every Pokemon but Ferrothorn, and still set up its own gigantic substitutes. While the original full Baton Pass team had Vaporeon as a passer and Espeon as a recipient, this team was reliant on Espeon's magic bounce to actually get a chain off and allow Vaporeon to wreck. After Baton Pass was nerfed even harder, Vaporeon's use dwindled, and that's how it ended up in a sad state in underuse. But for a while, it was a demon. Vaporeon had a few notable appearances in VGC 2014. Matthias Helmold placed 48th with it at Worlds, and John Russ took 6th at Seattle Regionals. Unfortunately, there's not much info on these two Vaporeons. But what we do have is a write-up of Wolf Glick's unique Vaporeon he used to place 5th at Virginia Regionals and Top 32 in Florida. To be clear, this Vaporeon was actually pretty different. In Florida, Wolf used a conventional Vaporeon, likely similar to the other ones used, that had Protect, Helping Hand Wish, Scald, and that had Water Absorb and a Citrus Berry. Pretty normal stuff for a support tank. But in Virginia, Wolf used a Vaporeon with one of the strangest moves in the game, Celebrate. Celebrate is a move available only on event Pokemon. Now Celebrate is talked about somewhat these days because if Z Celebrate is used, it boosts all the user stats by one stage. But this was Gen 6. There were no Z Crystals yet. Instead, Celebrate did nothing except play an extremely long animation, which was exactly what Wolf wanted. In one of the most degenerate strategies ever, Wolf used Celebrate Celebrate to timer stall because of the long animation. Wolf's Vaporeon suffered from bad IVs since it was an event Pokemon, but his opponent suffered in a whole nother way. He said he was pleased with Vaporeon, although it had a tendency to get critted because, and I quote, of his tendency to stay on the field longer because he is a fish. Okay, Wolf, at least he got the last laugh. And I thought timeouts in Melee were degenerate. And that's it, so how good was Vaporeon actually? In what seems to be my catchphrase these days, it was pretty good. It skirted around overuse for most of its light, only dropping to underuse twice, and one of those times was because Baton Pass was banned. Vaporeon hasn't really changed much since it got Wish, but if you've been playing Pokemon for a while, you know this thing defined bulky waters and Wish passing for a while. These days, just like Jolteon, Power Creep has caught up to it, but it had a good run or swim, whatever. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always, if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Wipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content, and of course, as I always say, comment on what Pokemon you want to see next. Also, thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos, and thank you to all of you as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms, and that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.